The bill, entitled Protection from Internet Falsehood and Manipulations Bill 2019, is sponsored by Mohamed Sani Musa, Senator representing Niger East Senatorial District. The proposed legislation was one of the 11 bills read during plenary. In the previous Senate, there was a similar bill sponsored by Bala Na'ala, then Deputy Majority Leader. However, the bill was withdrawn after outrage by some Nigerians. Ikmo Musa Ugiagbe reporting. Okay, uh, that will set the tone for our first discussion on the program this morning, looking at uh, the, the new move by the federal government to, as we now understand, sanitize the uh, social media, or put differently, bring sanity to the social media. But quickly, I want to remind you that uh, the race for who becomes the girl with the hottest legs, uh, 2019, uh, is on, and of course, uh, auditions have been ongoing now uh, for a while. Uh, so we thought we could broaden the net a little and uh, give uh, a few more persons the opportunity to be part of it. And as such, uh, independent television and radio have been magnanimous enough to say, hey, uh, we, we can extend this gesture uh, a few more days just to ensure that uh, uh, a few more persons are brought into uh, the net as quickly as possible. So all you have to do for you to be part of uh, 2019 uh, Miss ITV Hot Legs uh, to get a free form, which is not something we usually do, is to send your name and location uh, to 08037267596 via WhatsApp. Please note that via WhatsApp, uh, 08038726759 via WhatsApp. Just send your name and location to that number, and then we take it up from there. But the good thing again is at the end of our discussion on the program this morning, we'll be giving you uh, ladies who are eligible uh, a chance to call in, tell us your name and location, and then you can also uh, see the possibility of uh, making sure you get uh, a copy of the form so you can enter for the competition. But in the meantime, I want to uh, return to our discussion on the program this morning. Remember, we have two. We're starting with the first one, the move by the federal government to uh, tackle hate speech and, of course, fake news across social media platforms. I'm joined by Reverend uh, Ulubenga Alege. I hope I got that one correctly. Uh, he is, of course, a cleric and uh, he is a public affairs commentator. But in between, of course, he, do, he does a, a whole lot of other things. But this morning, we want to uh, tap into his passion for a better Nigeria. Uh, I know, for example, that he's a man who is interested uh, in having conversations about uh, social issues, political issues, issues that define for the better uh, the kind of society we want to see. So good to have you on the program this morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Great. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Very much. You know, you and I, we, we, we had a brief talk uh, one time about certain issues that were not uh, very pleasant yeah. all right, about our state in particular. Yeah. But this morning, we want to look at an issue that is, for want of better words, countrywide, which yeah. is the move by the federal government to say, hey, uh, we, we can do something about this social media rave, as yeah. we know it now. Yeah. Uh, because social media for a while has been a, a phenomenon, and it will appear it will continue to be that for a long time yeah, to come. Yeah. When you look at this initiative by the federal government, what really are your sentiments? Oh, okay. Thank you. Let me first of all say thank you for having me. Thank you. Good morning, Nigerians. Oh, all right. I, to say, to be very, very frank with you, the idea of sanitizing social media mm. is not that in its holistic approach as if it's bad, okay. so to say. So to say, we, we all know, actually, even on the internet, it depends on what you want. At times, you might be browsing the internet, some things just pop up. Mm -hmm. There are different kinds of things. Like I tell people, when you go on the internet, you must be focused on what you want, mm -hmm. on what you need, what you want to get. Okay, I haven't said that. I know that social media can be a, a lot of activities, both the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. But the truth is this, and we must have to live with this. Social media has come to stay. So we can't fight that. No, 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 no. We must settle that in our mind. Mm. Is a, is, it, it has become a part of life. Almost everybody you see now have an Android. Almost everybody you see has something. And social media has gone so, so viral, so that there is virtually anything you can do right now mm -hmm. without, if you are, if I, a friend of mine my, my was telling me that his sister just looked at and said, you are not on Facebook, that you are not living. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that defines so, people now. Yeah, mm. yeah. He said, you're not on Facebook, you're not living. And, and because of that. So let me establish that. It is not that having to sanitize, that's the word. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't want to say control, right? right? Because there are two different things. Mm -hmm. Sanitizing the social media is not bad in its entirety. 
okay. right? But now, we now look at what is the motive behind it. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is the motive behind it? The, and, and then what is, why, why are you making this move? Is it, are, you, are, you, are you reactionary? Okay. Are, you, are you reacting to some things? And then if you are reacting to some things, if you ask me, the first thing that you will have done, if you want to, if, if the motive is genuine, and you want to sanitize uh, things like this, is, mm. is that you discover that you will, you have to first of all, right, make known what, okay, these are the things that we notice. Yeah. These are the things that we notice. So specifics. Yes, specifics. Mm. You talk about specifics. These are the things that we notice. And for the betterment, betterment of uh, whatever, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this. Then we, we might even come to a round table uh, and discuss it. And you can even see, even the people who are into uh, internet, the IT experts, mm -hmm. can, will be able to advise you and say, okay, okay, this is how we can do this, this is how we can do Certain this. Certain modalities that can be put on yeah, the ground. Yeah, there are very, very good modalities that can be put. And then, then, the, the, the people, the citizens, we know that you have their, 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 their interest mm -hmm. at heart. Mm -hmm. And then they will see, they would even see and say, okay, this is why you are doing this. But when you just come out and say, we want to sanitize social media, is it because, just like you said, you are looking at hate speech, what are, what are, the, what are the things, why, why are the reasons that you want to sanitize mm -hmm. social media? And then the timing again. You but could there have been a better time? Because people always talk about timing. Could there have been a better time than now? Oh, okay. The, uh, there, there could have been a better time. Mm -hmm. yeah. It may not even be now, like I said. It, it may even be. It may. It, it may even be gradual. Okay. It, it may be so gradual. Are we? Are we? Are we hasty about this? Is that yeah, a yeah. Yeah, we are. I, I'll tell you we something. Are. The Minister of Information is particular about two things. I mean, he speaks on behalf of the federal government, yes, at yes. least as far as this issue is concerned. Yeah. He talks about two things: hate speech, fake news. I think yeah. fake news is really at the core of this. Because, I mean, we are in the conventional media, so yeah, to speak, all right? Yeah. So we won't just put a news story on air yeah. until we have checked and double-checked. We yeah. must have done our due diligence yeah. before the story goes on yeah. air. But for social media platforms, for yeah. blogs, for yeah. example, yeah. it's more random. Yeah. It's more impulsive yeah. and instinctive. Yes. So somebody just gets a piece of news because you're keen on being the first to yes. break it. Yes. Uh, for you, you think it's a scoop. Yeah. So you want to be the first to put it out there. So everybody sees it and they buy into it. Mm. I had a guest on the show here on Tuesday, and he talked about how that people are more likely to believe what they see on the screen. Yeah. There's some level of authority that comes with yeah. it. In the U.S., for example, Donald Trump has spent the last two years plus yeah. fighting what fake he news. personally termed fake news. Fake news yeah. People say fake news has always been here, hate speech has always been here, yeah. but that should not be an excuse for us to leave it to grow wings, to uh, flourish, and then become even much bigger problems. No, it, sh it shouldn't be an ex excuse. Like I have established, I'm not, I'm not averse okay. to that. But you right. talk about motive. Yeah. But you talk about motive and the timing, mm. right? Because, and then, what are you targeting? Okay. See, for, for you to, that's why I say we must be careful about what we use. That's why I like the word sanitize. Not regulate. Not, not regulate or control. Okay. Right? Because you, you, we, are, we are all aware about Arab Spring. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's what the federal government is aware of. But if you look at hate speech, yes, they are hate speech, and you have fake news, which is the, the crux of the matter. Right. Now, Fake news, let me be very frank with you, right? The conventional uh, media, mm -hmm. both the print and the electronic media right now, cannot even survive without the social media. That's okay. the truth. Because of the media convergence. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. Because of the convergence and, and because of the synergy. Okay. If, if you see a, a lot of uh, even uh, TV stations now, they have their own app. You say, okay, subscribe to this app, download mm -hmm. the app, and do this thing, and give us... Right. Some will even tell you first-hand news. Mm -hmm. You know, take the picture, do this, and do that. Now, having said that, it's not that everything is bad. Now, the, the, the issue of the fake news. Yes, there are people... Well, as I was talking before I came on, as I was preparing for this program, I just told myself, I think there is a level, some level of uh, uh, intelligence redundancy or laziness. Mm. Whether you like it or not, in this 21st century, yeah, social media has come to say, now there's a cyber war going on. Mm. There's a cyber war so does it, going does it on. look like we don't recognize that there's a cyber thank war? You. Then, thank you. We don't recognize that. See, if it's, if it's in the U.S. or any developed country right now, have you ever heard U.S. coming out to say we are fighting, we want to regulate or sanitize social media? There's, there, there, there are people, even before these things come out, they have really thought, projected, and said, in the future, something like this might happen. Why don't we start dealing with it now? 
putting things in place. All right. Are you getting me? So by the time these things are, you can bring these things down immediately and say, okay, even if you cannot take everything out, you'll be able to control things because there's a cyber war going on right now. And it's high time Nigeria, we live up to that and we recognize that. And then we cog into it, we, we plug into it. When we plug into it, we ask questions. Okay, who can help us do this, do this? And then again, I think the people, again, in order to sanitize, you need to get close to the people. Mm. Uh, for you to say you want to start doing this kind of a thing, it means that you are a little bit far from the people. And when people don't get good information, All right. when even the government holds information, are you getting me? What, what is right before my eyes? I see you, Uyi, you are wearing blue. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. You are wearing this color of the, uh, the, this thing. And the citizens see you are, we are wearing this kind of a thing. And then the government comes out and says, no, what, what you are wearing is white. Your jacket is white. Mm -hmm. The people will tell you, no, this is what we have seen. Uh, 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 you're already making a, a whole lot of uh, points with, with this matter. We're going to push this conversation uh, further for you. We'll take a quick break now. We're back yeah. shortly. Stay with us. TMI. Every opinion counts. Uh, thank you for staying with us uh, on the program. I was just talking with uh, Olubenga Lege a while ago about this uh, social media uh, frenzy, and he mentioned something very striking, which is the Arab Spring. We can't forget very yeah. soon, starting from 2011. Yeah. I mean, that conversation has not changed. Instead, it has continued to expand <laughs> and uh, evolve. Well, remember, too, that the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, also mentioned countries like Germany, Egypt, uh, who have done this, who are currently doing this as well. It, it gives the impression that this is uh, something that has a global, uh, as it were, approach to it, because it will appear Nigeria is not the only country affected. But what exactly are the peculiarities as far as approaching uh, this issue is concerned? Remember that over time, people have asked two questions about the internet. First, who owns the internet? That is, if it's possible somebody even owns the internet in the first instance. The second is, can the internet be regulated? Remember that the internet has two subsets, the web and social media. They are two different things, all right? But now we're particular about social media because that is where people can go to get interactive. People do all sorts of things. They say all sorts of things. Of course, let's also know that there's, there's the blessing part of the social media. Mm. People organize real-time trainings across social media. There are churches that broadcast live on Twitter, mm. uh, Periscope, for example, live on Facebook. There are people, trainings, institutions across the world uh, that leverage these tools available on social media to do what they do and make the world a better place one day at a time. But the concern that the government is having now, according to the Minister of Information, is if we do not nip this in the board, this country one day will wake up and realize it's on fire. Fred Uigwe is an economist and a politician. He has just joined us on the program. Good to have you on TMI this morning. Thank you very much. I'm just going to allow you to lend your voice quickly, too, uh, because uh, you are very interested in social issues as well. Uh, this conversation doesn't look like anything that's going to leave here anytime soon, because just yesterday, the Senate already ensured the bill being proposed uh, passed through the first reading. Uh, that, that's, that's some progress on some level. All right, so when you look at all this, what's your candid assessment? Uh, it's, uh, it's ridiculous and it's uh, surprising that this administration, especially one with uh, an information minister that we knew and we've always known to be a social critic himself, a political critic of uh, no small measure, is the one championing the restriction of uh, the voices of this, what we used to call the silent majority. Um, the social media platform has given uh, opportunity to the silent majority to be heard. And it didn't used to be so. Um, when in 1948 the United uh, Nations Charter was established, there were guarantees. And some of those guarantees are uh, right to life, freedom of association, freedom of speech, uh, which by extension is freedom of press, and uh, freedom of movement. And we are signatories, we are a signatory to that uh, charter. That means we must abide. It is because these are freedoms and rights that are, are necessary for human development that they were established. And they have become part of democratic processes, particularly. Uh, because only democracies actually 
are designed to protect this right, right to life, and the freedoms. We, we claim to practice a democracy. We cannot be at the same time practicing a democracy and not practicing a democracy. Because you cannot say, OK, these are the elements of a process. And then you start doing things inimical and negating that process and claim to still be doing that process. It's either we are a democracy or we are not. And if, if um, democratic processes uh, are designed to reflect the minds of the masses, the minds of the people, how are you going to be able to do that? You see, what is happening with social media is that knowledge is increasing. As his knowledge is increasing per individual and collectively, so also it is expanding across the world to places where ordinarily they will not get information. Now the world is receiving information in real time. And why should we be the ones restricting that? And again, like I have said, uh, the Minister of Information, uh, Lai Mohammed, being the one championing such a restriction is a major, is a major ben, ben, let me ask you this again. It's, it's, it's a disappointment. As a follow-up, do you agree that two phenomena, fake news, hate speech, have proved to be very destructive? Are we going to set fires to our forests just because there are snakes in the forest? You know, look, <laughs> come on. With every, with every process comes positives and negatives. How do you control the positives? Who now determines what is fake news? Or who now determines what is right to, what is right to allow and what is a right to disallow? You are in office today because you have an opportunity to serve the people. Tomorrow you are out of office. So tomorrow you lose that right to, reg to regulate. And somebody would with an opposite opinion comes into power and reverses that which you have done. That should not be the case. This is just a platform that allows people to air their views. The governments have a responsibility to be able to sift through this and they also have the resources to determine what they can use and what they should jettison and then to enlighten the people as to what is and what is not. And we have seen a lot of mischief. Uh, with all due respect, uh, let, let's think about the President of the United States. He has taken the issue of fake news to levels that are embarrassing. You know, because you can't just say anything is fake news because you don't like it. Anything you don't like is fake news. Anything you don't like is Anything you do not like, it's uh, against the government. If you cannot stand the heat, don't, go, don't stay in the kitchen. In the kitchen, to cook, there must be heat. If you can't stand it, get out of the kitchen. It's only in this place that we do not have officials who are of the honor enough, the integrity enough, to resign because they no longer fit in they no longer fit in the mode of the popular opinion within the government in which they serve. Instead they remain there because of what they will personally benefit. And that is a disgrace. Okay. I think we should rise up we should rise up above that level. Well, we're going to talk about bits uh, uh, I mean talk a bit about rising soon, but let me come back uh, to uh Oluk Benga here. The federal government knows that for things like this to pull through, for you to record success, there has to be a legal framework uh, backing it. So it's not something you're just going to do uh, at the whims and caprices of one person or of a government. All right? So the first thing is to send a bill to the Senate, which, of course, is in the works as we speak right now. But, and there's several other things, issues that must be addressed if this has to work at all. Yes, they, they are, that, that, that was why initially when I started, I said, one, timing, mm. motive. I, I want us to put that at the back of our mind. Mm. And then you, you, must, you must look at this. This is very, for me, it's, it's laughable. Because now, 
there are processes you need to follow. If you know, the process you need to follow might even take you as far as one or two years. Okay. Right? There are other, other institutional frameworks you need to follow. There are other processes you need to follow in order to bring this to bear. That, and that's why I'm saying this is very, very laughable. Okay, even if it, it has been passed, it has passed first reading now. Maybe because some uh, our representatives mm -hmm. and the senators just feel that, okay, this is a way of, of having to gag not just the press, okay. right? Not just the press. If, if you ask me, it's, it's a way of gagging the people, the entire citizens of the people, and say, okay, there are too many information going on around here, here and there. Now, if, if, if you know that there are other frameworks you need to follow, then definitely you will know that this thing is not something that can be done right as soon as possible or within a framework of maybe two, three months. And as you are going through that, you will know that, come to think of it, even the uh, Minister of Information himself, he has phones. He is on social media. But I think it's more important what he does with his phones. <laughs> it's more important. Mm. But that's how he gets information. He's not on TV all the time, right? He travels. Obviously. And someone, someone will get him and say, okay, see this thing. His children, you know, I, I was, as I was preparing for this thing, it's so exciting. I was just talking to myself. I told myself, okay, let's, let's have a, 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 an, an experiment, okay. right? An operational experiment. Just start from your home. Tell your children, okay, I want to sanitize social media in this house. All of you don't have, and see the reaction from your home first. Let them see the reaction from their home before bringing it to the national level. The minister says yeah. there's something that gets him uh, feeling uncomfortable, which yeah. is the fact that, according to him, yeah. the Nigerian Union of Journalists, uh, I mean, that's uh, a leading uh, union of uh, media practitioners yeah. across this country, ought to be the first to throw its weight, in fact, even jump in on initiative like and this. Support Instead, the initiative. they are not supporting. Instead, they are criticizing. But then, again, what government, according to him, is doing is to say, let's take the conversation to the stakeholders yeah. so they can throw their weight behind this. But what really brings about some sort of uh, controversy now is the fact that there's supposed to be, as I mentioned earlier, a convergence between the traditional media yeah. and the social so media. So if the NUJ, according to the Minister of Information, does not believe in this enough, is not confident in this enough yeah. to want to throw its weight behind it, to want to support it full-fledged, yeah. that raises questions as to going forward how possible it will be to make this a reality you are very right and i want to commend the nuj for that and and that was well, that the right move by the nuj yes see let me tell you that means that the nuj they know that things are dynamic okay the, the, you, you know even life itself is dynamic the way we were living 10 years ago is not the way we are living right now nuj and nuj too knows don't forget uh, this thing i come to say motive the nuj must have looked through this critically and say no this is what and this is though no, i we see some things here these things are not right one you are not following the lay down institutional framework to get these things done even though now they are going they have gone to secondly why the time the timing secondly what is your thirdly what is your motive for this and so nuj just say no 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 we cannot be part of this because they too as nuj even they know that we too on social media and that's the way that's 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 a very very good way of of reaching out to our people and even the nuj himself they know that journalism has gone beyond if i want to read papers now i mean not buy the hard, hard copies I just go on my Android and, and I read the news. The NUJ themselves, they know that they get even inf information firsthand from their, for example, Balog Market just got bought uh -huh. about two days ago. Before the conventional media got there, the people around have taken their phones and say, see what is happening. We travel on the road. It's bad. As I'm talking to you now, Wari Road is terrible. Bini Wari Road is terrible. Nobody's saying anything. Uh, Bini to Auchi Road, Puma Auchi and everything. Terrible road. You see people, when they get there, immediately people take there and say, see, see what is happening here. This is what is happening. That is not his speech. It's people expressing and saying, we want a better deal from our government. It's very, very, see, it, it's, it's very surprising that the same government that came on this mantra and on this uh, road on the back of the, of the, of the, the same thing, media. yes, on social media, they are now coming back to guard the social media. Because when you say people must be free, uh, free speech, free this one, as free, freedom of, of association, according to the charter, just as he said. And now you are coming back and turning against the same thing that you came, you rode on the back. But, 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 God says the idea is not to gag the press or stifle freedom of speech. Okay. That, that's already established. So okay. 
why then are we still feeling uncomfortable and having misgivings about this whole okay thing? let me tell you it's one thing to say one thing it's another thing to to see your, your action speaks louder than your voice you can say okay this is not the reason why we are it's like the closure of the border okay. right now uh, we know apart from stopping the rise importation and, and smuggling of smuggling arms and everything arms. Else. yes yes the insecurity the insurgency mm. and that's why someone like me i back that move okay. to, a, to an extent which is good mm. right because to come and if you see from since then there has been a lot of a, a little bit of sanity okay in the age, since the right? closure since the closure right although it may be a little bit discomforting to some people mm. to do the city but we need to bear with that but coming back to what we are discussing All right now the government saying uh, is they are not doing that to gag we we know you know that that's where and that's where the timing i continue to say it that's where the timing comes in why are you saying this now why are you doing this now why is it because someone is bringing you you for example when you hold information for example president travels out right and there's a lot of labaloo all over the place see if trump is sick today this this is the way media can be can be um, uh, managed if president trump or any president is, is sick today we are all human beings there's nothing wrong coming out and the and the uh, media person say sorry the president is as ah jimmy Carter was sick they will come out and say he has this kind of ailment or so 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 disease they will tell you how that he is undergoing treatment god bless you and they will start telling you ah he's undergoing treatment this one that puts the minds of the people at rest you can even start praying for him but when the president is out of the out of the country and you are saying no 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 he's, in, he's still in abuja are you getting me and say no no you went out for for medical these things no you just went there for vacation there's nothing wrong we are all human beings so when you start doing that it makes gives people the opportunity to start digging more to speculate and God, to speculate push fake news and, and that's why you will see them they now say okay they say it's in london okay let us go before you know they just record something within one minute and put it on social media why because you were not truthful enough are, are you getting me? That, that is the reason. We're, we're going to get to our second discussion very soon, but I, I need to talk to Fred a bit about this. Uh, when you look at this issue of fake news and social media and so on and so forth, it is a bit more uh, elaborate than we are even talking about here. Because you talk about social media, you're looking at giant tech companies, mm. whom are not even in Africa, let alone Nigeria. These are guys based in Silicon Valley somewhere in California, yeah. for example. Is there a chance that the government has a plan in place to, at some point, synergize with the Googles, with the Twitters, with uh, the Facebooks of this world to ensure that uh, uh, there is a strong collaboration enough to make this happen? Because it's not just going to start and end at the Senate, apparently, is it? The very vision and purpose of inve the invention and um, establishment of social media uh, business does not lend itself to being gagged and uh, to being restricted. They can be sanitized, no, can't it? No, look, listen. Here, it's uh, an opportunity for us to self-regulate. Okay. Okay. This is a platform. It's like in it's like in a conference or like okay in the parliament. The parliament is supposed to be a representation of the people. But for the parliament to function, there must be, of necessity, the freedom of expression in the parliament. On the parliamentary floor, there is nothing that cannot be said on the parliamentary floor. And the reason is, if you restrict the members from being able to say certain things, then their representation of the masses becomes restricted. So you want their representation to be total. And for them to have total representation, they also need total information. In restricting social media, we are tending towards totalitarianism, dictatorships. And that's inimical to what we are trying to pursue, democracy. Democracy guarantees freedom of expression. And because that is the one way that you can get information enough to be able to make progress. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is wisdom. So you need to hear from everybody. And I'll cite a particular example. 
um, in 1980, uh, excuse me, 19, uh, in 2000, in year 2000, and I think it was uh, 2007 or 2006, there was Hurricane Rita right. in the United States. And after what happened the, year pre uh, the, the previous year with Hurricane Katrina, the people were scared because the direction was facing the fourth largest city in the United States, Houston, Texas with about six million people. And then they decided to move. People decided to leave the city rather than be caught up in the same devastation that had just affected their neighbor the previous year. And there were three million people on the highways. Okay. And everybody was tuned to the radio, trying to listen to where to go, what directions, where the traffic was flowing and all of that. A journey that usually took like uh, Houston to Dallas, four hours, was taking, 20, was taking up to 30 hours because the highways were clogged. Then somebody, just one person, who had wisdom, said, why are their vehicles still coming in and vehicles going out? Let's direct all vehicles One -way traffic. out of the, of the city. The government picked it up because somebody spoke that didn't have opportunity to, or probably didn't even have the phone numbers to uh, the managers of the hurricane, of the disaster, of the impending disaster. Okay. And they took that on advisement. And immediately they began to work on it. And everybody got impatient. Oh, why can't we get out of this? Why can't they just, you know, switch all these lines and all of that, let everybody get out? But they were working. They got in touch with every community, every precinct police along each of the highways to let, to let them know that this was what they intended to do. It took about three hours for them to effect it. And when they now effected it, instead of 30 hours to get out, it took me, for example, 18 hours to get out. It reduced it. There was an improvement because one person spoke. Then when you now restrict social media, we lose that opportunity. So you are not going to throw away the baby and the bathwater. You want to throw away the bathwater, but you don't want to throw the baby away with it. We are here uh, telling ourselves we want to develop, we want to advance. But we are doing everything to take us back. We didn't invent the social media. We didn't, we are not the, the leaders in the management or in the administration of social media. They are leading nations who are much more advanced than us. It behooves us too, if we are smart, to watch what they are doing and to copy because they are ahead of us in that technology, in, even in that social understanding. They are studying, there are people who are studying it. There is no evidence that anything here has been st studied. So like uh, my good friend said, what is the motive behind it? Because it inconveniences you, then you want to restrict the people. You pull everybody back. Synergy, we want to join our hands together, everybody, the government, the public and the private sector, to pull this nation forward. And it's not going to happen by restricting information. Okay, uh, well, we're just going to talk about uh, something that we all have to pull ourselves out of uh, in a bit. But I'll be right after this break. Do stay with us. I'm sure that um, you already know that we are possibly the lowest uh, in terms of tax to GDP. We are one of the countries that's probably the lowest. In fact, I don't know any other country that's lower than us except maybe Somalia or somewhere. Well, it's certainly the lowest by far. So there's a need for us to actually increase tax in terms of absolute numbers. You know, we should increase income tax, we should increase the rate of income tax and the rate of corporation tax. With respect to uh, the detention of uh, Elzaki and Dasuki and all that, I, let, let, let me say first that I'm, I, I very strongly believe that we must obey the law, must, you know, and I'm a strong believer 
in obedience to court orders. I, I do want to say that I, I believe very strongly that where the orders of the court are given, we must obey the orders of the court, but we also reserve the right to appeal. As you know, uh, within uh, the limits of what can be disclosed, uh, there's a lot of um, negotiations that are going on, and we continue to negotiate uh, with uh, those individuals who are holding uh, the chief of girls. We have gone quite far uh, with negotiations for, you know, uh, hopefully uh, another batch of the girls. The FBI, as well as uh, the State Department, came up with a report that the president, or what the president said, was wrong. I didn't hear anybody say, ah, what a dysfunctional government. Why did the State Department not agree with the president? Why did the FBI not agree with the president? In fact, it was praised as being the robust, uh, the, 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 the very robust expression of constitutional government everybody playing his role. When that happened, the president looked at both what the, the SSS said and what, he, and what Magu said. And the president said, I'm satisfied with what I've read here, and I'm putting back this same Magu as, the, as, my, uh, as my nominee for the EFCC chair. And that's exactly what the president did. You know, and I don't see any reason why that, that should be contested in any way. He has not interfered with what the DSS wants to say. He's not interfered. If he wanted to interfere, he would say, DSS, don't say anything there, keep quiet. It is up to the Senate to make their judgment. It is up to us to say what we will, to, to do what we wish. If our candidate is rejected by the Senate, we, have, we, can, we can represent our candidate. There's no law that says we cannot represent our candidate. TMI, every opinion counts. Apparently, that was an interview the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbanjo, had granted uh, uh, Guardian uh, TV uh, not so long ago. But there are several issues that he raised today. He talked about uh, the acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, that's the FCC, uh, Magu. Uh, that has become an issue of controversy over a long time. But we want to look at the institutional elements in the fight against corruption or in the anti-corruption uh, war, as it's uh, always called. I'm joined by uh, an executive member of Edo State's uh, National Youth Council of Nigeria, Fred Ashedrak uh, uh, Uyedo, uh, PRO2, uh, Edo State's NYCN. Yes. It's so good to have you here this morning. Thank you very much. For having I I'm going to be talking to you very soon, but first I want uh, Fred to help us establish a narrative for the war against corruption. Uh, we've been here for a long time, no doubt about that. But people now say, uh, for the better part, that the reason we are still stuck in the woods as far as fighting corruption is concerned in Nigeria is because uh, the problem is systemic. And then that's one. Then you also have a second batch of people who would say uh, corruption is fighting back. Uh, how, how do we balance these narratives? This is just, uh, this has become a recurring decimal in conversations across the country. Mm. Because, like you have said, the problem has become systemic. Uh, we failed to nip it in the bud when it started to raid, say. Uh, some of us have lived through, through administrations that were much more responsible and much less corrupt than we have experienced with recent administrations. And it's a shame that our hopes for a better Nigeria, a less corrupt Nigeria, uh, has been dashed. What we have is a system where I believe we can say that we are lacking in we are, in the we are to actually fight it. We have all criticized it. We all know how it affects us, individually and collectively. But the will to fight it, and that has to come from the leaders. You see, I do not understand how anybody will believe that you can be corrupt and at the same time 
make progress. Mm -hmm. It does not work. Uh, my specialization is in business. For you to be able to operate efficiently, which is the only and the sole purpose of every business, you have to be able to bring resources together and apply them at their optimal uh, contributory levels. So when you begin to plan a production system, and then you now introduce that element of corruption, that skews the elements that you are going to bring to bear for production. And when it skews it, you become less efficient. And when you become less efficient, you are able to less uh, compete. When you are able to less compete, you are able to make less profit. Eventually, you run out of business. That is where we are as a nation. We cannot continue to condone corruption in the hope that somehow we will make progress. It does not, they don't go together. It's something that is a cancer to us and something we have to solve. There have been attempts, different attempts. Instead of us to tweak those attempts, to fix them and make them better, for example, the whistleblower program, mm. which I was very excited about. I think most Nigerians welcome okay. to that policy, yes. right? I was very excited about. We have thought that that was a system that was going to be improved upon. Mm. But instead, the, the executives, they laid back while the legislative uh, arm destroyed it because many of them were going to be we're, we're, we're going to be uh, indicted or yes we're going to be indicted over you know such practices let's take indonesia i was listening to the president recently uh i think his name is widodo uh, yeah joko widodo jo joko widodo mm. he said he has in custody he has in prisons 109 legislators who have been corrupt and a number of ministers, former and supposedly, supposedly serving ministers, who were found to be corrupt. You cannot live, we are living in a, a society where there are no consequences for infractions, for breaking our laws. Why make the laws if you are not going to enforce them and you are not going to punish uh, those who violate them? You know, it, it does not make sense. It's as good as not making laws. A society like Nigeria, where we know, we have all agreed, that corruption has become systemic. We have uh, less than 100,000 people in our prison system. It's laughable. If we have to control it, the only, way we, the only thing we need to do is to make sure that there are consequences that the people, it becomes a psyche with us. Mm. And that is why in a society like that of the United States and most of the advanced nations, they understand that there are consequences for violating their laws. In China, China understood very well that to be able to make progress in their system, you have to execute those who want to work against the better will of the generality of but, the but we've also we've also seen reports saying that those are extreme moves i mean amnesty international for example transparency international they've all been uh pushing hard very hard railing against those moves where you have capital punishment for people who are corrupt they're saying we, we can have a a less harsh uh punitive measures in place but, but yeah, I, yeah, they, they, uh, okay, in many of those nations mm -hmm. where they are they have uh, they have evolved mm -hmm. to now to now uh, denounce to now want to denounce or denounce uh, capital punishment. They have long prison sentences. Okay, I've heard of prison sentences in the United States upwards of three hundred years in prison. You know, multiple and even uh, single prison sentences. Mm. Yes, life imprisonment actually does. Uh, 
life imprisonment, and long prison sentences. You see, the consequences have to just fit the bill to discourage. Okay. Because there is what you call the felicific uh, calculus. Mm. The criminal or the violator calculates the benefits against the consequence. Okay? So if he thinks, oh, well, I'm only going to be fined $500, so if I, uh, 500 naira, so if I steal 10 million, I will just go and pay the 500 million. What do you think he's going to do? He will steal it. But if he realizes that if he steals 500 naira, he's going to lose 10,000 naira, he's not likely to steal it. Okay, let's talk about uh, the institutions now, Lubenga, fighting corruption uh, in this country. You have the EFCC, you have the ICPC. And then in, in recent times, you started having different panels uh, saddled with the responsibility of recovering assets for federal government and so on and so forth. Just yesterday, news is reporting that Attorney General uh, of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakar Malami, <coughs> has uh, cut down the powers of the EFCC and the ICPC. That's one. The second has scrapped uh, these uh, panels, put together. You know, of course, one was led by Okoye or Bono Obla, who had since been removed from uh, office. Are, are these steps in the right direction? No. Let me, let me first of all establish something. Mm. There is no problem with Nigeria. Okay. The problem is with the people. Let's establish that. Mm. Because when everybody is talking, they are talking about Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. Nigeria is not a, a tangible or a visible entity that you can hold. Mm. Right? So, if you bring some set of other people into this same entity called Nigeria, they will establish good order. And, you will be, and Nigeria will become envy of the entire world. I want to establish that. So which means the problem of corruption is not with the country itself. It's with the people. It's with the people. They are the people. It's the people that perpetrate corruption, acts of corruption. And, and let me say this. Corruption are in different dimensions and classifications. You have the exotic corruption, transactional corruption, financial corruption, corruption. I know we are we are depending more. We are we are concentrating more on the financial aspect of corruption. Now, I haven't established that. The issue of the institutions, EFCC, ICPC, and all other panels. One of the ways, one of the institutions, if you don't have the political will, mm. the political will. And when you have the political will, what is the motive behind that will? Right. ICPC, EFCC. When you, I would rather call this, when you say war on corruption, I, I say I, I, I'm, I'm, too, I'm not too comfortable with the word war. I would rather say uh, reforms, right, on, about corruption, on corruption. Now, EFCC, there has, there has not been too much. How many people, how many of our governors? how many of the reason has been prosecuted. And if you want to link that with the judicial system, the slow speed at which things, are, even in the process of, it will interest you that even in the process of prosecuting corrupt cases, corruption takes place. Right in the middle. It, right in the middle. You see, you caught someone, okay, for example, the issue of plea bargain. Just like he said, you know, if, 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 you, if, you, if you, you're stolen five billion, and then I can bargain, and then at the end, maybe I'm settling with 500 million. To me, on his, that, that is corruption. And so, will play bargain is used by advanced countries like the US, for But instance. you look at your environment. So there's peculiarity. Yes, mm. there, there are peculiarities to it. You look at your environment. When someone is, is hardened, and say, okay, I'm going to do this. And I want to say this again. The society, too, are not helping matters. We are not helping matters. When you celebrate people, you don't know where they got their money from. You don't know where a young man is, is doing things, and you celebrate them. So even the EFCC, the EFCC and ICPC that we set up, how effective are they? 
from going by what you just mentioned now, the I mean the idea that society, I mean there's an obvious erosion of values. Yes. That's what you're implying. Yeah. And then of course young people make money, nobody cares how they made yeah. the money, where they got the money from. Yeah. Instead we're celebrating them. Yes. I, I think the FCC is doing a lot of work on that front because in recent months we continue to hear most on a daily basis the uh, cases boys. of uh, the so called Yahoo boys, uh, some of them even in university yeah. hostels yeah. Uh, being arrested and yeah. a number of them yeah. successfully prosecuted, prosecuted. Uh, already. That's some substantial progress. I, that, that is that is some level of progress mm. that you say now but even with the efcc and the icpc right. that you are that you're looking at now how free are they to prosecute this but they have acts uh, uh, empowering them establishing that is where the political world comes in mm. okay you, you you saw a governor i don't want you you saw a governor there's a video you saw this governor exchanging money taking bribes and everything and you see you say you still need evidence and the man is still in power what are we talking about? The political, the political will to do it. Mm. That is institutional. Then so, so some lawyers at that point also said the, the man being, I mean, on account of being a city governor, is yeah. immune from prosecution until he leaves office. Until that argument checks out legally, doesn't it? It, no, does. it goes legally. Yes. But even after leaving office, mm. how many have been prosecuted? Okay, maybe we should uh, take a deep breath and wait for the matter to leave office. Yes. Uh, while we're waiting yes. for him to do that, I want to call, no, yes, I'm going to come to you, Fred, uh, eventually. But let me talk to Shedra quickly. You are a young man, obviously. Young people in this country are often put in the spotlights where issues of corruption, financial corruption, just as Luke Benga said, uh, you know, is, is concerned. It will appear even the older generations blame the younger ones. They say, uh, you guys have spoiled this country for us. It wasn't like this in the 70s. It wasn't like this in the 50s. This country used to be a much better place, and so on and so forth. Do young people, from what you, I mean, you get to interact with people again, I mean, every now and then, on account of you being uh, a youth leader, do, do you think, are you convinced young people understand the conversation about anti-corruption? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me uh, attempt to correct an impression. Okay. Corrupt, corruption mm. uh, did not begin uh, just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Corruption started a long time ago. In my memory, to serve me right, the, I think the earliest case of corruption uh, was, uh, I think, in 1944, when uh, the great Namdi Azikiwe was accused of corruption some time ago. So the idea of corruption has been with us for that long. Mm. At the point, the British colonial government was even accused of corruption. When uh, at some point they elected uh, Fulani man for certain positions. So my idea, my, my point is, corruption has been with us for a very long time. And for uh, our, our fathers, our leaders to say young people uh, are not doing better, <laughs> or young persons are not better than the older generation, I think they are not uh, absolutely correct. They are not being sincere. And they are also not being sincere. Mm. OK? They, they, they can also be correct, because a tree a fruit, rather, <laughs> does not fall far from the tree. Yeah. So if they say, if they accuse us, young people, then we could also point fingers at them, that uh, we have learned from them. People, learn what is co correct, learn positives, instead of uh, learning what is negative. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, yes, when he was talking, he mentioned or what, rather when you were talking, while you were talking, you mentioned the issue of uh, EFCC, ICPC, and the fight against corruption, and uh, he alluded to uh, EFCC making progress as to, I do not agree that progress has been made in that regard. Uh, what are the uh, results? What are the parameters to measure the results that have been made? What are the parameters? Have we taken time to study the parameters? So for me, I think the, the issue of corruption, uh, as has been mentioned, there has been no will, sincerity, in the fight against corruption. Let, if, let's talk about that fight more uh, now. Some persons are beginning to point, in fact, for some years now, I've been pointing to what they call 
replication, in some cases they say proliferation or fancy corruption agencies. Some people say we don't even need all of these agencies. After all, before the emergence of the EFCC in 2004, the police force, I mean the Nigerian police, already had an anti-fraud unit that some person said was at that time relatively vibrant, robust, and result-oriented. In any case, now that we had the EFCC 15 years ago, we should have left it at that instead of coming to establish, I mean, further things like ICPC, then again and again, every government would want to introduce one form of panel, probe panel, or another. So they feel it's waste of resources, it's just uh, nothing better than replication. It should that be an issue, really, whether we have 10 anti-corruption agencies or we have just one anti-corruption agency? For me, for me, it is an issue. Okay. But they would explain. The EFCC has its specific roles. Hmm. The ICPC has their roles. And we are told the ICPC deals with uh, uh, corruption in the, the public service. Hmm. The ministries, that, departments, and agencies. Yes, mm -hmm. public service. Why the EFCC has the mandate of expanding, hmm. goes to the private sector and all that. That is their explanation. But for me, as you have mentioned, if you had that in the police, the anti-fraud anti unit, mm. have an issue in the police. I do not think there was a need for establishing those uh, other uh, institutions. Some persons would, uh, on a lighter note, say that it was, it's a means for creating jobs. Okay. I don't know how true that is. For me, I think it is an issue. If you wanted to expand and uh, improve, build capacity of the anti-fraud unit in the police, you could do that instead of setting up the EFCC, going further to set up the ICPC, and uh, creating committees to to look into cor cor corruption cases. Mm -hmm. For me, I think it's an issue. All right, uh, Fred, you were going to add something a while ago, uh, so you hold up your hand. But just in case uh, you have lost that thought, uh, let's uh, talk about recoveries. Uh, a lot of persons say because he just mentioned that what are the indices, uh, you know, what are the, the the yardsticks, what are the benchmarks by which we measure how much of progress we have made. I remember there was a time when we had uh, Malam Nuhu Rebadu as the EFCC chair. Uh, we, we saw items being displayed as part of recoveries by the commission at that time. In fact, the specific amount was mentioned. But Nigerians are beginning to get really worried as to where exactly are these monies. Let's forget about the cars and other items, for example, houses everywhere, both in this country and outside. All of the monies we keep hearing about, where are they? What exactly have they been used for? But lately, government has been doing some explanation. Uh, part of the explanation is that uh, some of the money has been pushed into SIPs, that are social investment programs, and so on and so forth. Are we, are we, are we getting this right that way? Because it will appear uh, people want to see more transparency, apparently. People want to know that you have recovered 50,000 naira from a particular individual or from an institution, from an agency of government or even a privately held uh, organization. And then they want to know further what exactly, where exactly is the money, what is the plan for uh, that money? Is the EFCC in particular doing a great job with communication? Let me first and foremost say this. See, the reason Nigerians uh, shy away from paying taxes, when I mean Nigerians, yeah. I mean largely shy away from paying taxes is for the lack of accountability, lack of transparency. If I'm going to send my, uh, my assistant, my ward, to go on an errand for me, and I give that ward a certain amount of money for a specific amount of, of or specific items to be purchased. And the world comes and dumps uh, a number of goods in front of me and say, oh, that's what I bought. That's not accountability. Please, give me account. Tell me exactly how much you spent on each of the items. So that is when there is accountability that the people are convinced that, oh, for the overt accountability, transparency, and integrity, mm. then they now have the desire to play their own role. It increases 
the masses' confidence. confidence. That is what you want to build. You want to build confidence in your government. Mm. You see, when an American, for example, uh, is stuck somewhere anywhere in the world, he or she is sure that if he calls to their embassy, calls to their government, that something at least will be done. There will be a good attempt to rescue them if they are in distress. I don't feel that. I don't feel that a level of uh, assurance with my nation, Nigeria, and there's no reason why I should not feel that level of assurance. So you're talking about uh, the, you are to, we are talking about Recoveries. the agencies, the agencies, yes, the recoveries. Mm. You see, when you have multiple agencies, the advantage is to having multiple agencies because when one agency has become so either corrupt, then you might need a second agency to to check with them. That's one. If you have one agency too, okay, it might be unwieldy, very big agency. But the agency too will have uh, spe uh, specializations by departments. So you can decide to divorce that department, the, those departments from each other. They don't have to in, in, in I'm, I'm afraid our, our time is far spent yes. on the program. I, I think every time we're having a conversation like this <laughs> about corruption and many of the social political issues that we grapple with in this country, it will appear time literally. Uh, I mean, your uh, flies away. Afraid. Exactly. I, I want to thank especially the three gentlemen who have been on the program today, starting with uh, Reverend Ulubenga Lege uh, for coming. We thank you, sir. We thank appreciate it. Uh, and of course, uh, the gentleman in the middle, a youth, a very vibrant and intelligent one uh, for that matter. Shedrak Uyedo is a PR2 of National Youth Council of Nigeria, Edo State. Thank you for coming on the program as well. Thank you. But I say it's unfortunate that we were having to. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I think that's what happens with time. Yeah, well, when I wish we, we had more time. To uh, Hopefully, uh, in the days, weeks, and months ahead, we'll continue to push this conversation. Let me say this to Nigerians. Yes. There is hope. In spite of all we have been <coughs> through, mm -hmm. there is hope for this nation. Please, Nigerians, don't lose hope in this nation. And they are very good Nigerians. They are very good Nigerians. I feel very... When, <laughs> they, very yes, they, when they say Nigerians are corrupt. Mm -hmm. No. No, the people that are giving Nigeria this so-called wrong appellation or whatever, they are not more than about 5-10%. So I want to say this to you, Nigerians, wherever you are watching right now, let's keep hope alive. God is in charge of this nation. Please be proud to be in Nigeria. I, I think wherever you I, are. I think that's a very beautiful place to live it this morning. I didn't say that coming, but uh, WIMS can be very advantageous, right? I want to also thank especially uh, Mr. Fred Uyigwe, politician and economist, for coming on the program as well. Thank you. I uh, thank you. Uh, for All right, so you. I hope you guys enjoy the rest uh, of the day. Uh, that's what we're living with the discussion this morning. But remember that uh, the 2019 ITV um, is hot legs. Uh, is on. I mean, the auditions are on already, and uh, we have been magnanimous enough uh, as independent television and radio to say, hey, uh, let's give you a handle on this one. Let's give you some uh, good starts. All right, so we're giving out free forms today on the program. So already, I mean, on the program, we already told you the number to send your name and location to uh, via WhatsApp. So do that, and I'm back here shortly uh, so we can take your calls and uh, hand you those forms.